Okay. okay. Welcome back. Uh, we're now um, continuing the meeting of January 3rd uh, the budget hearing. We are now looking at the finance department, um, capital uh, and operating budget. Yep. And Mark Zielinski, who is our administrative director, will be talking about it. Yeah, and uh, the budget you have in front of you is essentially the same budget as 2011 for 2012. Um, you know, we do the, the uh, uh, issuance of the uh, septic betterment uh, loans. We, uh, we're managing that. We did, uh, we, they're doing much more, um, oh, I'm sorry. Um, they're doing much more in terms of uh, projects on the septic betterment um, program than we initially intended. And we just secured another $10 million, the third $10 million issuance from the assembly. So. Um, and we'll be issuing the bonds for those as they issue the project loans. Um, so we're doing those. Um, right now we have the auditors here who are doing the 2010 audit, and that should be finished um, shortly. Um, we're also going to be completing the audit for CVEC, um, which we will need um, done, and that will be the first audit that CVEC has had completed for itself, and as you know, um, we manage the finances for CVEC. It's getting a little bit more complicated than initially, especially because of the solar PV project that we undertook at CVEC. We have eight installations on roofs across the Cape of solar PV systems, and I do billing actually for those. I bill the towns for the electricity that comes from the system and then turn around and pay uh, Con Ed Solutions, which is the owner of the system, um, for the energy that CVEC takes for those. So it's a little bit more complicated, but it's been working good. It's going to get much more complicated if we're able to implement the uh, solar PVs at the landfills that we bid out just recently. So. Is that that solar array sort of thing? That's the landfills? solar array, yeah. We've got, um, top of my head. About a dozen sites that have been bid on. Um, we've shortlisted the vendors to so about three vendors right now that we're working or looking at a little bit more carefully. So um, hopefully we'll be approaching an award, well, I guess, sometime this month, I would say. We extended it till I think, the end, end, of, of, February end of February to wrap so, everything up. So these are towns that have asked uh, See back to go out and, mm -hmm. and do the bidding for yep. the towns, yeah. and so yeah. private companies are coming in to do this. Yes, Power yeah. is one. Brewster uh, voted a town meeting to support mm -hmm. it, yeah. and, and I believe the other towns that you're going out for have been have successfully survived a town meeting vote. Uh, or they this. will in the upcoming spring town meeting. Right. So, and uh, this is uh, from what I from what I've seen has gotten a lot more successful. Acceptance than the you know the terms of one project. Yeah, there's still some you know regulatory hurdles to clear like there are with everything. We you guys talked about kind of the whole with George the landfill um, uh, um, uh, issue locating anything on a landfill, but this is something that I think it uh, DEP is very favorable. They've done them before. They're working on a couple now. Doesn't permeate the landfill line or those types of things. So. Now, is this to provide energy for the municipality? Yes, or for the municipality. It's like the fuel project in Falmouth. Okay, so what, what would be the return? I mean, what what uh, what um, percentage of energy would a solar array provide? Because and obviously, it's size. Depending upon the size, town, yeah. it can provide all of the energy. It could. Um, town of Brewster's, it does not provide the percentage. Off the top of my head, I don't have that in front of me. Typically, they're smaller because mm -hmm. typically they're a little bit less efficient than uh, a wind turbine right. on the order of uh, a net capacity factor of 14%, say, for a solar array, where you can get 20s and even 30s with a wind turbine. Right. Harwich. Um, and because of the space limitations, um, you don't get as much production. I think some of the sites are, are recommending um, maybe a 2 megawatt installation. Um, most of them around one, I'd say, and then some of them are even a little bit lower. Harwich is 100% satisfied because they're a big project. But once it's, once everything is, when once they've made their decision on who to finalize, then you can have an update on exact size because everything is still fluid right now. We're still but, uh, also, it doesn't, 
it's on net meter, so right. none of that really matters. Because um, you get cash, that's what you get. Yeah. For. Oh, you get cash. What about the lifespan? Of the so PVs are anywhere from 20 to 25 20. years. 30, depends upon, you know, mm -hmm. technology, inverters. Things have to be replaced. Right, right. I was going to say, what, are there, <clears throat> what is the maintenance of them? They're pretty maintenance free. Yeah, um, they, you have to you conduct visual walkthroughs. Once a, once a year. Yeah, you just might have to replace the panels. You might have to replace the inverter. Right. Um, you have to. The only maintenance on site you really have to do is you want to make sure that any weeds or things that grow don't right. Right. interfere right. with the. Uh, there used to be an issue with regard to uh, when they weren't using glass. They're using Kevlar, for example, for and there was a certain amount of deterioration because of the UV effect on you know on the Kevlar. So there had to be some inhibitors in it. But I don't I don't know what the you know what the construct of, of these particular PV panels are. But when, <coughs> when we talked about it, uh, you know, at our energy at our energy committee meeting, we were we were being told that uh, we could expect a 15 to 20 year life on the panels that were being selected. Right. There is a degradation of a certain percentage every year. Half a percent um, every year. The good news is is these are um, owned privately, so this is a pay as you go contract. So you only yeah. pay for what you take. So it is in the owner of the facility's best interest to make sure that they are producing at the top, mm -hmm. at their peak. And that owner is actually the provider of the uh, equipment, mm -hmm. uh, yes. which is supplying the site yep. and, the, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, the contractor, oh, the vendor, is providing the material yes. and uh, we're getting the benefit of the output. Yep. So the, our exposure with regard to investment is eliminated. And Correct. I believe that that's the deal that's offered to the other community that is. Yeah. All you sign is the PPA, the Power Purchase right. Agreement. Yeah. Um, I have a question. So go ahead. Yeah. Um, there, the group insurance position yep. and the administrative assistant position. Mm -hmm. I didn't. I just realized I didn't address that in the Cape Flight Compact budget, so it needs to be I think so I did when I was making the out the. Um, Where are finished with the finance position? Yeah. No, that's kind of what she's asking well, about because we've re implemented. Remember, we did the study after the sheriff moved, mm -hmm. and now. Um, so now we're moving into that, that hasn't quite fully implemented itself yet, but we're doing that. Um, I think Michelle's just about done now. Um, so she, we were doing, we went through a training process where we had the existing people kind of retrain the existing staff, and so we've done that. So in the um, in the salary numbers, that will all get reflected. Um, where we, we're basically down, uh, I think it half. You're down a half time, but in my budget, this is my mistake. And we can talk, it spills over into the Cape Flight Compact. I don't have any time budgeted for the administrative assistant that's out there. And I don't think it's in the, com we haven't talked about the commissioner's budget yet. You so mean, um, um, it's Karen. a staff position, oh, Karen. Karen. Right. Uh, in the salary calculations, I did that under the Cape Flight Compact's number. Okay, so. Which is there. In Cape Light Compact general fund budget? Cape, Cape Light Compact energy fund budget. Because I, I I'm, I'm only picking up half of her time. Oh, okay. So All we're right. going to need to pick up half of her time, that so position that's in time. That's the Cape Cod Commission budget, then, you think? I mean, the uh, commissioner's yes. budget. Yes. Okay. Yeah, because she's, yeah. Cause or the Cape Light Compact general fund budget somewhere. Well, you have to tell me. But we need to have. Um, it should be in the county commissioner's budget. Half yeah. time in the commissioner's budget, half time in Cape Light Compact energy fund. Okay. What benefit would we get since you brought it up? What benefit would the county we'll get, we'll get out of her administrative uh, assistance? Well, oh, right now that she's the backup for right. the county yeah, commissioners, right. the finance yeah. department, no, the dredge for everybody. Right everybody. Yeah. So yeah. right now we're getting it. Yeah. So it's kind of so. So it should be <clears throat> half. Doing it on the that comes when we look at the commission's budget, which I don't think we're going to look at for a couple. Of that's months. next week. That's yeah, next yeah. week. And actually, that's part of an in, kind of interactive process because you have to tell us what our, your goals are. Well, the yeah, the other piece on the uh, when we get to the commission's budget, I want to bring up the uh, you know the topic of uh, of a virtual presence, and that might also be a time to talk about uh, uh, what costs would be associated with this meeting at different times and at different places. Okay, that might be an appropriate place to talk about that. Do you, do you have any questions with regard to uh, any of the items in the community? Uh, just one. Under your um, budget line, yeah. where it says mm -hmm. software, hardware, maintenance, yep. that 35, is that all maintenance? That's not acquisition of any. It's not acquisition. Software. Those are the licensing and maintenance fees yes. for the units. Okay. Yep. That's my only question. And do you have any questions? 
Okay. Not right now. Bill, I have one more on, on the shared cost portion. It's pretty straightforward, but because of where we were, I didn't put any um, tuition reimbursement in the budget. Oh. For any of the county, we had previously had fifteen thousand in for tuition reimbursement. So I guess I would ask whether or not. Yeah, I think we should. And this is for how many people are taking advantage of it? <clears throat> right now, nobody. In the past, if we've had we several. We didn't fund it last year. I believe we funded one person because I remember signing that for. Uh, uh, you know, if you funded anything, it was paid for from a department budget, not the overall budget. A department can ask for tuition reimbursement in their own so, department. But well, I don't think we Cape Lake Compact was paying for that. Uh, the the tuition that was that was paid for out of the energy funds for professional development. When just as a general question before you know before we, we address this, uh, in the private sector there, there has to be a significant correlation between the courses that are taken and the um, the reimbursement that's sought. Um, for example, going for a general degree because it improves your uh, uh, marketability. marketability is not something that uh, a lot of private sector companies support. And um, if we begin the discussion, I would be concerned that if we have it as a general item, that uh, there be some very high degree of specificity to the uh, to the use of the tuition it, reimbursement. We do have a policy, just to remind you, we do a tuition reimbursement policy, which requires that they submit their request, the course description for your consideration and within an explanation. And most of the tuition reimbursement that we have funded has been for our employees working on a, a master's degree, finishing some, but not many, finishing up bachelor's degree. Most have been master's degrees, uh, master's of public administration, master of public health, and the requirement is that you stay two years after the completion of each course or you have to refund the money. We've also capped it because we had, you know, our graduate courses, $1,500 to $2,500, <coughs> and we didn't have that kind of money. So we've capped it at $500 per, per, per course. But we always have the discretion to look at it and, you know, yes, I'm in. You have to submit your copy of the course description and why you're taking this. So. Okay. And a second question. Go ahead. No, second, just a yours, second then. question is that when you talk about tuition reimbursement, I, for example, have complete tuition reimbursement at any state college. However, I still have to pay the fees. Do you reimburse both tuition and fees? Um, I can't remember. I can't remember. Because I the I fees, think. you know, the, you know, the fees are It's usually a course expensive. bill, like the, the, you know, yeah. most of our requests to date have been for, I'm going to take um, conflict negotiation as part of the Suffolk MPA program and the, co the cost is X. And they've, you know, they pre they pay it, and then we reimburse them. Okay, on the basis of what the total cost is, not just the tuition. Correct. Okay. Except for, I don't think we've reimbursed textbooks. No, we've never done any type of textbooks or anything like that. And again, depending upon the participation and how much money is, that we've also limited it to, you know, your cost, your class might well, cost two thousand, but I only something. have five hundred, so it's a partial. No. You had a question? Oh, I think the only that they, they're required to get a satisfactory grade. Well, that's remember, it's reimbursed, so you have to show proof that you passed. It's a 2.7 or higher, mm -hmm. and you have to prove proof that you paid. Mm -hmm. So that it's not up front, right. of course, it's right. yeah. after you've done it. That's the Barnesville County Tuitions Reimbursement mm -hmm. Policy. So we can throw it out there. We can see if you have the funding available. I'd have yeah, to go back and look next week. and see what we funded in the past. Yeah, it hasn't been much. I think the maximum may we funded it at one point right. in time. I was going to say 30, 35, something oh, like that. Oh, I didn't that. think it was that high. I'll have to, I can yeah, go back I and look. So. All right, I'll, I'll pull that. Okay. Um, there, was, there was a question. Okay. Uh, the application, the cap on the cost. Uh, I guess it's the Oh, uh, do you have any other questions on the finance? Not right now. I mean, we're going to be discussing our budget next week, so we can always return if we have questions once we look at things. I mean, yeah, I, I, I'm, yeah, we can do I'm deferring anytime. any questions yeah. or leaving open the, the ability to come back to this if I if, if you want to zero in. Okay, then uh, there, is always, uh, there has been a question that's been raised at the Assembly from time to time about uh, the combination of the Director of Finance and the Administrator. Uh, what's your answer to that this year? Um, the same answer as I have every yeah. year. 
I'm not sure I understand. Do you have a specific question? Um, I used to have. So, a you, so mm -hmm. because you know, the should we pay two people? The, you know, well, the question comes up. You know, Joanne Nelson, you know, is the uh, assistant treasurer. Right. Essentially, performs the treasurer's role. She uh, uh, the she performs the accountant role. I would accountant. Say, yeah. Then, sure. So that's how we. Be. And that question has come up, Bill, even from the auditor. And the, the answer is, is that we've split those two functions. So she handles the accounts and the treasury function, and I handle the finance and the budgeting function. Okay. Well, I think, you know, have asked and answered. Thank okay. you very much. Okay, so uh, that would be that would conclude our finance. And I like it. And in, in, in answer to Sheila's question, we can come back to any of these anytime mm -hmm. that we want. Okay. And, um, um, we now have the cake like, uh, I think that's I think probably a good idea. Once we, you, you already, since it's your budget, you didn't have any questions. From the finance? No, it's the same. It's kind of a steady, steady state budget. Mm -hmm. That reflects the changes from the sheriff's department. Uh, cake like uh, oh, If people is. need I a copy, yes, I, I have a copy here. Right. Do you need one? Yeah, I need one too. I'm sorry. I think you put these up five times. That's I right. thought we were supposed I to I did be, make a, um, a few extra saving, copies. Saving the world. Let's be chucked well, out. Well, maybe, maybe we, we should go paperless one of these things. Mm -hmm. We all have our computers here in front of us. Yeah, we can mm -hmm. do that. I've got mine still on here. Um, I hear that the town council's going paperless. Barnesville Town Council. I thought that was you. We no, went was... paperless a year ago. Yeah. We all have our little computers with you. Yeah, yeah or yeah. Kindles, as the case may be. It can be downloaded on a Kindle. There's also questions and about it's you know, nice. you can do outside No, you can't. We them. have a rule. You cannot text or email. How do we, how do we know I one on? time had to check on the score of the Patriots game, but that's the only time oh. I've ever... <laughs> oh, oh, and see, and people will forgive me for that. Breaking news alert mm. in the middle of the meeting. Breaking news. Oh, town council. Town I thought you, uh, S-E-L is what no, I was thinking. I'm like... Council. There's no way they go pay. Oh, they're they're the yeah. chief consumers. That's of, right. They uh, love town paper council. Trails. CIL. I got mm -hmm. you. Okay. They're going paperless. So I read the paper. Okay. So we could do that sometime. We could do that. Like compact. Okay. Most of the money that comes out of this budget comes out of uh, the energy funds, right? Yes, correct. You, if you notice there, if you go right through the budget, it is level funded requests from last year. All of the salaries and staff are funded outside of. The county general fund budget. So overall, you're looking at about a hundred and something thousand dollar budget of county general funds. County. Oh, county funds. Is that the hundred and six ninety? If you added it up, I'm going with you. Yeah, that's just, that, that was the budget. Yes. That's county, mm -hmm. that's and the county. rest is that's from, the the energy energy from the energy efficiency fund. funds, from the Cape Lake Compact's power supply uh, reserve. Those are that they fund the operating budget, so they. Can I ask a question? How many people <coughs> we have? How many users of the, of the electrical utility? We have about two hundred and five thousand electric accounts. Uh, that's what the Cape Light Compact is. Sir, do you have to ask? Be a little bit more. Specific? I wanted to guess. Yeah, they did finish it. I meant no. I meant. I mean, who? How many households receive electrical power? Um, um, how many households purchase electricity and participate in the Cap Cape Light Compact? Not in the Cape Light Compact. I want the whole. I want the whole big fat number. With That's two, we have two hundred and two thousand roughly electric accounts, but two hundred two, two hundred six thousand electric accounts. I think she wants to know the total amount. I want to know how many homes. No, how many in Anstar? How many in Dominion? How yeah, many I want the whole the enchilada. What's the I have biggest? No idea what you're asking for. Two people are asking me questions, so try. I want to know how many how many houses. How many houses on the Cape? Uh, they're on the Cape. Mm -hmm. And businesses, and we're power. getting, and they're, of course, they're getting electrical power. So, what is, what is the pool, the entire it pool the total of account. market? Of in what? In, 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 the in electricity, electric accounts, yes. Mm -hmm. Electrical of, accounts. Yeah, just your electricity. You. How many electric meters exist in Two hundred, about two hundred and two, two hundred and six thousand electric meters exist on Cape Cod and Martha's Vineyard. Okay. Oh, and Martha's And now... Yeah. They're about 10%. And the Cape Lake Compact, when a person signs up for the Cape Lake Compact, they, 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 you're in 
uh, an aggregate. Now you're in a, in, a, in a group that is now going to barter for better rates mm -hmm. compared to what they would get if it was nobody. Because mm -hmm. this all came down from deregulation, right? Mm -hmm. So out of that number, you just said how many? About 163,000 accounts are on the Cape Light Compact's competitive supply rate. Okay, so you'd have a better so you'd have a better rate if everybody joined. Not necessarily. No. No, it doesn't have. Uh, well, but wasn't that the purpose of it the in the beginning was to try to, no. well, not only expand energy efficiency, right. but, um, right. but if you would have a better, you'd have more SWAT in your negotiations That's for part rates. Part of it. You have yeah. the purpose was to to represent consumers who independently would not have any. Ability, any leveraging for buying right. The uh, customers who have left, the majority of them are, are large CNI customers who have lots of leverage independently and can in fact sometimes be more responsive to electric markets and get a better rate independently. I see. But the majority of our customers are residential. Right, exactly. So, so if, if every resident signed up for the Cape Light Compact, they could be enhancing your negotiating power to help. Most of the customers have on the residential side are with the Cape Light yeah, Compact. Okay. Very, very few are not. Are not. Mm -hmm. It is mostly the commercial accounts that do not participate in the Cape Light Compacts right. program. Okay. And in some cases, they are running under a national program where they're where they're already part of an aggregating process that's mm -hmm. outside right. of the region. I see. I see. Right. All the for example, all so it doesn't federal, even if they wanted to, right. it's all not the in their benefit. federal accounts have been aggregated nationally. Right. So right. they, they don't participate, right. um, which post office, seashore, the base. So there's a lot of accounts that right. don't participate. The supermarket chains yeah, aggregate own, nationally, right. so they don't participate, and they do better on their own. Right. What does the state do? They are all over the map. They mostly participate with us. Oh. I, just wanted to, I was just curious them. because, um, you know, I was talking to Helen, uh, somebody at Wellfleet, and they were... Um, you know, they were saying, you know, they were encouraging people, everybody to sign on because the bit more you sign on and I'm like, you know, I just, I think that's true, but I just wanted to, and if it is true, it's good for people to know. The um, issue is, is, you know, when you are in the competitive market, the difference, the key difference between for a residential customer, is the Cape Light Compact has enough leverage to negotiate a better contract. Right. When you sign up for a competitive supplier as a residential customer, Unfortunately, you are not able to negotiate out all of the pastors. So what people have experienced in the last five years is the volatility in pastors. They sign up for a rate that they think is really great, and then over the term of the contract it changes because right. they get pastors. And the, what the compact does is negotiates contracts such that all of that risk is put back on the supplier and not on the customer. So, so when you get a price, you get a fixed price, and it doesn't change. It's like signing up for a credit card at zero percent, and before you know it, you're up to thirty. Right. <laughs> Did you just get a new bid for uh, your? Yeah. Yeah. Yep, seven, 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 seven percent. Yes. I noticed seven point eight cents. Have to go get them. Uh, okay, I was just, I was just curious. It's, it's a, it's a very oh, interesting question because when we established the Cape Light Compact, there was no vehicle for residential consumers, right. and and indeed, I had felt and 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 several of the assembly members agree with me that. You could aggregate large commercial accounts, but the large commercial accounts were very, you know, you know very easy to, you know, fungible. They, they could go any place. Industrial accounts um, had very little margin, so they were popping from one place to the other. But I felt that as a public entity, and, and the assembly and the commissioners agreed, and it, I think at that point, if Rob O'Leary was one of the, you know, one of the chief uh, supporters of it, that until we had something to represent the interest of our consumers, you know, these people live here, we really didn't have any business in being in here. So the whole motivation was who would speak for the consumers on Cape Cod of electricity? And that's what we did and that's why we've subsidized it. And now it's got to the point where it supports itself. And one of the one of the issues for other regions that want to go into it is that they've got to understand that there is a startup cost associated with it, which mm -hmm. tax dollars on Cape Cod supported until it got underway and had momentum, and now it's able to, let's say, right. to more or less support itself. Okay. Thank you. Do you have questions? No. Cape Light no. Compact. Hoorah. We can, um... I believe the county dredge is next. Okay. The county dredge is next. Um, 
you know that there's always before we leave um, the Cape Lake Cup. Well, you know what? I'll, have, we'll come back to that we, another we time. Come back to yeah, other stuff, stuff, but yeah. not during the, the budget time. Yeah, we I will. That's right. I mean, we could have it. Yeah. We'll come back to it. I'll come back to it another time. So, so now we're on the dredge. Dredge. We need another dredge. How can we get some grant money to get another dredge? Well, I think we have to prove really, that's where the money came from, from the state. Uh, they've put in Kevin Mooney, the, uh, they've asked for it. It's just the state is, as you read in the paper, is a $2 billion shortfall. So um, the only way, the dredge, why the dredge pot was so successful is we had a million dollar capital grant. So in order to purchase another, you'd either have to borrow a million dollars or you'd have to get a grant. We've asked, we've, you know, we've lobbied, we work very closely with the state, with the um, trying to think of it's not DEP, DCR, uh, as they bring forward the request for an additional dredge, but it has not been forthcoming. Okay. Yeah, I think that we should really keep an eye out because, you know, the, it, there's more and more, not only need for it in, in as far as all this, but... Um, well, with the wastewater issue. With the wastewater issue, it's to, huge. You know, it's, widen the culverts. It's huge, and also look at all the stuff we've had to go through in the last couple of years, you know, with the timelines and... Yep. Yeah, so it's very tough. So I would just ask that we always, you know, that we be very well, proactive I, in I pursuing that type of grant. Idea. And perhaps we should talk about what kind of strategy should we use in order to create a political will to support it. Right. So perhaps this doesn't belong to the budget part. No. As much as it belongs among us to... to okay, then I think that's a good well, thing to do. My question was, like, how many projects do they do a year? Has it been increasing? Oh, Does it stay pretty much the same because it's only one dredge? We tend to do a lot of projects, but they're smaller in size, mm -hmm. um, as opposed to large where you're digging, when I mean large, 50,000 cubic yards, they tend to be 4,000, 5,000, 6,000 cubic yards, and those are very expensive projects because you have to mobilize from harbor to harbor. Right. That's where your costs are in mobilization. Right. So, but they... And every harbor has to wait, and if they have to wait so long, then they get under pressure that they have to maybe... Even I mean, the schedule, the, because of the permit windows <laughs> due to right. fisheries, is very narrow, and it's a very, you know, this has been a good winter, winter. we haven't had a lot of yeah. ice so far, but you're working against nature. You know, the time, and we also also have the summer, because nobody wants us dredging well, past in June or in July, or, or their equipment their in Memorial July. Memorial Day, because you remember kind of a hoorah we went through two years ago when we put the spoils out on the beach. Uh, yep. Was it um, right. uh, Memorial Day weekend? Yeah. Well, that's because the windows were so short. They couldn't do it through the winter because of some winter flounder, so they had to do it in these small periods. Well, we, we, we can go through the whole education we, of that. But a lot of progress in having the state with the retirement of a certain person, having the state look at not just an arbitrary two-thirds of the coastline of Massachusetts and having one application, but actually looking at each particular area and the temperature of that area in order to right. accommodate what, you know, what, right. the, re, what the true re, reality conditions are. If we keep moving in that direction and have more availability, we'd have more justification for having an additional bridge. All right. I, I'm sorry I brought it up at this point, but no, I just thought I'd throw it. I think, it come out of waste I think that's an important issue, yeah. and I'd like I'd like to see you sort of follow up. Okay. On that's one of the recurring yeah. issues. Yeah. It's a very recurring yeah. issue, and you, it has the potential. You, you went to those meetings. Uh, you know, well, I think when you were on the assembly, I, I think it's not only a revenue generator for it, but it's a very needed service, and it's an it expensive service. It helps. It, it helps. Sure, it's in many many ways. Well, I would I, I would. Correct you though. Right now, it's not a revenue generator except to cover its own costs. Cost. Right. 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 Exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. 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 Yeah, the town's benefit. Yeah, from the, so, so right. from that point of view, I think it's something that perhaps we could come up with uh, some type of and sharing. And with your cost. elected officials, from federal and state, yeah. a capital grant to purchase another dredge yeah. is what is needed. Okay. Well, is, let me be, ask you this: though, is, this, is it an issue of permitting, or just the windows that are en enabled? Uh, it is. A, it's a combination of both, Mark. You know they are did they are they have agreed to look at the permits instead of having blanket dates to look at it by you know each by harbor and by area so that you can get some flexibility in moving the dates. But the problem is is you have narrow windows, 
you have different types of dredging than what we have that it could also be used. So we wouldn't buy a replicate of what right. exactly. Would be you can get something that's a little bit more right. nimble. Right. So there, but, but you know, it's when Wayne put this together, it's still it. a million dollar. Whatever happened project. to the uh, Martha's Vineyard dredge? They are, are still, they still they're still operational, and it is, you know, it does function. You know, the only thing I will say... Well, I guess, the, the, yeah, I don't want to put you in the spot. Is there an opportunity to do that, use that somehow? No, we actually looked projects. at purchasing it or, you know, yeah. they're not, or you know, they don't run it like we run our dredge. We, the success of the Barnes and County Dredge Program is directly responsible to the staff. Like the Cape Light Compact and a lot of our unique things that have come on in the last 10 years, we don't run them like public projects. We run them like mm -hmm. a private enterprise. And if you started running them like public, really work at 8 to 4, it, we would be toast. These guys work 5 in the morning, right. 5 at night, 7 days a week. So there's a lot of, they work out in, outside the box. And mm -hmm. that's why it was so successful. In large part is because we brought somebody who ran, who, that's how you run a dredge program in the real world, and they brought that ethic and technique to right. the public sector. Maggie, and Barnstable County would cease to exist if we had the what I'd call a public sector attitude. We Maybe. have, I believe that, you know, part of our mission, which we state over and over again to enhance the quality of life, doesn't have a nine, let's say nine to four. Exactly. You know, piece built into it. Everybody here works very hard to deliver. That was what I'm trying to, to deliver. Know, how the vineyard dredge operates more The traditional. vineyard apparently has a, what, what I would call more of a traditional attitude with regard to these issues. But are we? Um, but they don't have a county commissioner. No, the, the county dredge doesn't do it. It doesn't allow itself to be hired for private projects. Not for private projects. We've only worked, we work for the towns. Right. The towns have done dredging of private beaches and terrain for having a uh, right-of-way granted mm. and they put put sand on private to, for in exchange for right-of-way but our work is always with the town the what the town does in putting that projects together is the town's business but we can we contract with the town not a private entity so what would be the cost say of a of a dredging project say an area of maybe Falmouth Harbor <laughs> no um, oh, say a half a mile. You long line workers back. No, yeah, you can't. Yeah, like well, yeah, you have to. It's how far are you pumping the spoils? Right. So is it short line or question. long line, and how yeah. much? Spoils is really the big issue, isn't right. it? Where does right. it go? Type of, if it's just clean sand, it can go right, right on the beach. What are you dredging? How deep it is? Right. Um, where? Enough. How far are you pumping You're the spoils? Because that's for a here if it's tonight. if it's that's mud, and then it has to usually. It has to sit, it has to drain, and uh, if the soils are not compatible with the existing beach, you can't put it there. You have to dispose of it in a landfill, which means you have to pay for it. So it just mm. a bit depends. Your sand has to be compatible oh. with what's on your beach. And if it's not, you have to pump it, you have to put it in a containment area, it has to drain, and then you have to haul it out. What's our base per cubic yard cost right it's now? It's $7 for short line, $11 for long line. What does that mean? If so distance. Pump. Mark was saying it's the distance. If we have oh, to have the, the booster pump running and more pipe and more fuel, it costs more to operate the dredge. What's the short line? Three thousand feet? Uh, a little under, but yeah, you use like that. that. We have eleven thousand feet. feet of yeah, pipe. Yeah, if you get up to about a, over three thousand right. feet, you start needing the booster pump, and it's going to cost a lot more. Three thousand feet. So yeah, <coughs> three thousand feet is uh, three quarters of a mile, right? I hear it's a little, little less than three quarters. Three quarters of a what? Mile. It's five thousand two hundred eighty. It's a what? A mile. Oh yeah, I'm right. I'm repeating that. <laughs> See, three three thousand feet. Do they three worry minutes. about the noise from the dredge? You know, at three thousand feet, the dredge might be really noisy. Good point. Yeah, good point. Yeah. Good point. And flicker too, you know. Yeah, the flicker that you know, and, and turbulence in the water, you know, disturbing animal life as it as it takes. No, we don't disturb animal life. We have done extensive permitting to make sure that we are digging sand at a time when you're not having fish spawn, etc. That's right. That's That was a big thing about are flounder. Fish really, are the flounder really there at the time? That's right. That there? Flounder don't spawn in water not. below 32 they go, degrees. They go someplace else, yeah. Well, of course, flicker occurs in conservation areas as it goes through the trees, and I wonder if we shouldn't destroy those forests in order to avoid people from being disturbed by the flicker that goes through the high 
cover if it's next to conservation areas. Good. Something to think about. We certainly sure. don't want to flick it to bother people. So we have to work on getting a million dollars. Yes, a capital grant is what is needed. Otherwise, you're looking at having to borrow the money. In order to borrow the money, your rates would then have to increase to pay back your debt and cover your costs. Because as Mark said, the dredge is covering its costs and maintaining a positive cash flow for the, the equipment. Equipment, Marine equipment breaks down all the time. So, so you Sheila, if you were able to find that million dollars for the dredge, you'd probably have a guarantee of being reelected forever. Yes, there you go. So remember the theory behind this is the state used to pay 75% of right. the dredging costs. The town was uh, responsible for 25%. Uh, but the state never put any money in that little pool that was going to cover the 75%. So like the county, window. way back when, approached the state and said, listen, this is what we'll do. You give us a million bucks, we'll buy the equipment, we'll hire the staff, and we'll, we'll operate the dredge, and we'll only charge the towns the equivalent 25% of the market price. And we've pretty much done that throughout our existence. Um, and that's what that $7 um, uh, per cubic yard cost reflects. That's 25%. And that's about right, I think, I'd say for now. If you wanted to hire a dredge project commercially on the street, you're going to pay probably four times that number. Yeah, oh, easy. Mm. Okay, do we have anything else on the dredge? Nope, but if you noticed, I have some new, the line items have been. Uh, significantly rearranged due to um, conversations on how actual expenditures are occurring. So I, we started out putting them in large, you know, large amounts in one line item, but we've gone back to allocating them to multiple line items because that seems to work better for managing the, line, the budget. That's really the only Anybody change. Anybody have any questions about that? Mm -hmm. Okay. I believe that that would, if you have no questions, I believe that concludes our budget. I think it does. Today. And I think that what we need to have now is the uh, information on what we should have the next, the next week. week. Uh, the next the next week being a week from Wednesday, week from Wednesday. the 12th of January. 12. 12 o'clock. We haven't talked said? about start, I don't think, did we? Hmm. Time start? start time, you mean? Here's the packages. Oh. Uh, let's see, does the uh, next week budget package? Thank you. Uh, who is. Um, I would ask that you start in the morning because we have elections <clears throat> in the Cape Lake Compact. Oh, I think we did say, yeah, I think we I all, all of our budget meetings start in the morning because they pretty much go all day. Right. all day. Okay. All right, January 12th. 9.30 is what I okay, think. Is that, the, is that uh, the next Cape Light Compact meeting as well? Okay, so it's not this Wednesday. So why don't we start at 9, and I thought that worked pretty good. Yeah. yeah you do your business. Yeah, I think 9.30. And then nine. budgets. 9.30 is our, it's kind of our internal discussion. kind of late. And then at 10.30 I have EDC, but of course that's not going to be, so what we should do is do the revenue discussion then. Okay, what time, do you, want to, what time brief... are you suggesting we meet on uh, the 12th? I would say start at 9, okay. do your stuff, do whatever we need to do, and then 9.30 we start the budget stuff. Can I have and then how long will that what? go until? No. Well, if we did, if we go according to this, and Why? Would, you know, allowing 45 minutes per, per uh, item, would that be too much? I, I would say, given how today operated, the schedule that you have in front of you is pretty accurate. Uh, okay. So we get 9.30, yeah, at 10.30, which will now be a budget discussion, I mean a revenue discussion. 11, Andrew will come in for Water Protection Collaborative. Then at noon we can break, and then at 1 o'clock uh, we'll do Children's Cove, 1.30 Human Services, and 2.30 Resource Development. Bill, you need to be in the Cape Lake Compact Board meeting at 2 o'clock. Okay, so... Uh, for elections, you can step out, but he needs you to be there. Yeah, well, you can come and remind me of that. And if I, if, well, so, um, so we'll meet at 9, and then uh, we'll, uh, we'll say that we'll, uh, one thirty would be the but last. how about night. we do this, since we don't really have the 10.30, and the 9.30 is county commissioner, that's internal, I can try to move Andrew and everything. Can you move him up? Up to the 9.30, so that you're done by... 1.30. 1 1.30. I, I would like to shoot to get done by 1.30. I can that try to do good. that. If that's agreeable with the rest of you. That's fine. Okay. So 9 to 1.30 is what we're I planning for the 12. Now, in really your opinion, do we need any other dates to, uh, to uh, do any of this budget stuff? Uh, 
this week? And then the 19th, you do fire training. We have an open budget discussion. We do deeds, extension, human rights. And then on the 26th, we'll do arts, elder services, IT, and then we'll have general budget discussion. By that time, we'll need to know if we need to go back. Okay. Typically, we have not gone back too much. So by the time we reach the end of January, we're pretty much, we know what we want to do. and we're Yeah, right now we're sort of pieces. hearing everybody out and then saying, yeah. let's go take a look over at this now. Let's right, and also, and what are we going to do about you, it? you haven't seen, I, I haven't seen what the picture is. What does the total request picture look like? You have a yeah. sense of what the revenue picture looks like. I really need to get my hands on the retirement picture, which is more in focus now. We know a little bit more about that and what that number is going to be. Um, I don't really know what the um, health insurance number is. I'm using 10%. Hopefully it'll be less. That's what I was going to say. I'm it's, meeting the 19th. I'll know yeah. the 19th and the board approves it on the 26th. And I think last year what happened was I built in 10% and then went back and took some of that out because it was only lower. 6 or 7%. Right. So. But I'll know the night I have a I have a steering committee meeting on the 19th and a board meeting on the 26th. So by the 26th, we'll have a really good picture of what the budget is. So will. you'll send us a schedule with each one we're going to take up yeah, next Wednesday. Oh, yeah, I already done that. Really well, but I will, I will revise this to show you 930 and revise I'll look it. at it. Yeah, because yeah, he's going to put in the internal. He's taken out the EDC out of it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And Just we'll, so you can give us the, the schedule of who's coming when. Yeah, well, you already have this schedule. I do? Yeah. Yes. Well, when several, I'm several times. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, here it is, right here. So that. you have that. I do have so, it. But for next week on the 12th, I'll have to revise it a little bit. Okay, okay. so we're taking and out. And we'll send out the revision. We'll send out all the other yeah. stuff with it. So we're, and we're putting Andy in at 930. Yeah, I'm going to try. Hopefully that'll work. Um, do we have anything else on schedule? Yeah, we'll shift around other, or whatever. We have, uh, we have had a vote to approve the uh, needs uh, need action. Uh, yes. Did we have anything else that had to be added at this time? I, I have my report, oh, although yeah. it's a short one. Okay. No, I was asking for were there any yeah. other votes. Uh, you mean as far as, didn't we already move No, this? I know we did. Okay. No, I have nothing to add. Yeah, we have nothing to add. Yes, so I have nothing to add now that we Okay. Good. What's your report? So you want my report? Yeah. Just, yeah. Just, it's just a short one for this week. I'll have more next week. You can tell us about your vacation. <laughs> uh, no, it was very uneventful. It was very relaxing. Had to clean out from the big snowstorm on Monday. <clears throat> so what you got? What you got? Which we Kate didn't really receive anything. John Blaisdell called me at 6.30. He said, I said, John, that's really, it's kind of late you're calling me. He says, that's because we don't have anything down here. Yeah. Well, I was in Washington and I, we didn't have anything really down there either, but yeah. I had enough foresight to change my flight ahead of time right. before Christmas and got out only two days late as opposed to I would have been there until this Saturday. So, so yeah. because you know, Boston getting yeah, stopped Boston in New York. Here. Okay, do you have any questions on uh, on his report? So, on my report, I'm sorry, uh, to go back to that. Well, we already touched the, the county clerk. Yeah. Now we have the county hospital. As you're aware, we continue to have medical records of the county hospital. Oh. We need to keep these for 30 I mean, years. I mean, and, uh, I'm, I'm starting that kind of destruction process for the 30-year-old records now. I send Which off a, I have, to, I have to notify the state archivist and say, Please give me permission to destroy these records, and we have a box. We have all the boxes numbered, and I know which ones they are. And then they send me back a letter that says, "Sure, go ahead and do that." And I notify Iron Mountain, and we get rid of them. So, is that a good thing? Yes. Yeah. Well, no, that's what it's they do. It's a good thing. I know. It doesn't well, really matter. It's state what the state Oh, I know. I'm saying it's a good. You know, I'm just saying. Oh, I mean, now you can just transfer the stuff Iron Mountain some sort is of very good, and there's this. a lot of protection. It's, yeah, well, it's, I, oh, I know the whole setup is good, but I guess it's good. As to opposed to uh, doing what? Yeah, just 30 years, it's time to get rid of things. 30 years? Yeah. I'm not, you're required by law to keep medical records for 30, 30 years. years. Yeah, as a matter of fact, there's some you have to keep from. And that's what I'm saying. Well, I'm wondering well, if there's are, anything. Well, well other records are permanent legislate. records, like payroll <laughs> records and things like that. Well, actually, some people would say that in researching 
a community, you would want to know something about records. However, there is a requirement of confidentiality with regard to looking at private records. Right. And I don't believe that these For records medical records, I would require either the person themselves sign a piece of paper saying, please release my medical record to either themselves or they have to tell me that someone has to be the executor or the they have to have power of attorney for that person's medical records. Otherwise, we won't release them. The, the, there, is, there is an issue for people with regard to uh, uh, tracing what they call congenital <laughs> issues. Disease but, and, yeah. You know, uh, you know, among family members. But I believe that, uh, all, that was a TB sanitarium at one point, wasn't it? I'm sorry, I brought it up. Uh, yeah. I think that's what started. Yeah, that was back in the 19th century. Okay, yeah. I, I, uh, I regret, it's getting to be 3 o'clock and we all have to, so I, it's, it's really just a philosophical question, not anything to do with what you well, think it's really a wonderful question. I do too, I know, but I don't think oh, it's yeah, for here. Mean, it Bill's People question, get stuff to do. Yeah. No, I mean, no, my, like, you know, is it, is it you know, how, how can you keep those things for different, for reasons, you know, historical, you know, anthropological. Well, we keep them because we're <laughs> well, you're forced to. I know, to I know. Them. So well, now it's that. time, so let's move on because we've digressed into a totally different area. And so we already talked doing. about the county clerk thing, and yeah. you heard my two cents, and so and that's so about it. So you've got to schedule them on, the, uh, on there for the uh, 12th, right? What are you looking at? I will ask Jack to be present. I'm looking to see what you're looking at. Oh, no, I was just looking. He was just saying that it's time to destroy these. Oh. That process is stopped. So that, just reporting that he started the yeah. process. I'm thinking, I'm, I was not sticking with what was just being stated. I was yeah. digressing. But the public records very law bad. is very specific <clears throat> and it tells you for every little record how long you have to do it. Right. Pretty so, much. Yeah, I, yeah. I know that. Mine was a philosophical question. Yeah. January 15th. Can I get a copy? But you well, know, that I'm could sure. make me really want to. January <laughs> ones that I'm going to have to do. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. If it was a maturity bus, I'd give it a story. Please say alternative. We're all talking about maturity. Yeah. You said maturity. Oh, maturity. I thought you meant maturity. Question January 15th. What that's is the January Wednesday? 15th? Yes. 19th. No. January 19th. 19th. That's the next, 19th. that's the week from, yeah. That's a week, two weeks from today. Yeah, yeah that's And is that a long day? What do we have? We yeah. have a schedule for that. Schedule? We start with fire training, then we have an open uh, meeting, an open hour or so to talk about general budget items. All day. And then at 11.30 yeah. you have Registry of Deeds, at 1 o'clock you have Cooperative Extension, right. at 2 o'clock Human yeah, Rights. As far as I'm concerned, every, every Wednesday in January Pretty much. is full They're days. They're going to be, the 26th is a little bit less okay. full. Um, oh. yeah, but then so you have something? Not, uh, not an issue. Well, okay. the thing I could try to do is move... No, you don't have to move anything. It's fine the way it is. I was going to say move Human Rights up, like yeah. at the 10.30 slot. Oh, yeah, well, that might help oh, you get out earlier. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, let's do that. Because she has an appointment later in the afternoon. Yeah. So we try, that's why I try to keep these things a little flexible. So. I thought we were going to go to the gym. I'm waiting for that trip. I'm going to go with me. Don't forget the MMA, and you might want to, we talked about this a little bit offline. Just make sure you confirm everything you you're supposed to confirm. Tell me the date. Tara said Again. she has everybody it's all set Friday, up. Friday the 20th. What is it? 22nd? 21st. 21st. We go up on, so we're there Friday and Saturday? What Friday, Friday and Saturday. Well, I go Thursday because I have the yeah, board meeting. We go up on Thursday to meet with the <laughs> delegation. So you might want to think about things for us to talk about with the delegation, like the Dredge Capital Fund. Grant. What were the dates again? Is that January 22nd? The conference starts 21st. Friday morning, January 21st. First. Okay, the 20th, okay. the 21st, okay. the 21st, Saturday, the 22nd. And I, Kara can tell you 21st, when, 21st, when your hope when your reservation was made in March 20th. Okay. Get it in here, or right. we'll make the appointments, and then go, oh, wait a Okay, just uh, one other thing. Uh, uh, do you have any reports from uh, from the commissioners on, on activities? Uh, the only thing I can say is that I went to the homeless uh, memorial service right before Christmas, which was... You know, I think everyone should uh, think about attending that service. It's not long. It's very beautiful. Uh, it makes you stop and think about how <laughs> you are. God bless you, and how um, misfortune falls on others. And uh, it was just a very nice night. And um, you know, you heard from some uh, some very compelling stories that made you think. So I think that's all I have done. I'm sure I've done many other things, but other than attend 
represent us as best as I can among uh, holiday revelry around the county. But uh, and I've kept my composure and my decorum, so I just have that. I didn't read anything in the paper in the <laughs> yes, report, that's right. So, I so that's because shade. I've been behaving. <laughs> I'm like, well, I just wanted to say that we all picked, well, you didn't, because you couldn't, you were in the accident. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With Noah. Yeah, right. Which uh, ended up exceeding $70,000. Yeah, yeah we that was really good. Very good. It must be because we're getting more involved. <laughs> Probably because I didn't show up. Um, uh, and uh, I just want to, uh, uh, first of all, thank you very much for uh, electing me county uh, uh, chairman. I appreciate that. Uh, You're very welcome. And uh, I'd like to start off by saying that I particularly want us to think about every week to suggest topics for future agendas. I want you to keep thinking in those terms because uh, I, I think that's the way they get scheduled and we, and we meet the uh, spirit of the uh, open meeting law. Uh, but it's the most important thing is that we should all put things on the table that we should be, you know, that we think are of interest to, you know, to the people that are here. And um, I'd also like you to think about owning a particular area of policy oversight and programs related to that policy. And by that I mean we're all, we've all selected areas to, be, uh, to participate in. Uh, I would like you, to, you know, to consider that your role, our role for those areas is to provide oversight and report back. In other words, we own that and we continue to report to all of us as to what as to what's happened, mm -hmm. and by reporting in this in, in this type of venue, you know people will know that we're not just showing up on Wednesday and being like city hall draftsmen, you know, drawing our breath and our pay. Yeah, and, and then we all go out and you know, forget so, about what we talked about. Okay, and then uh, <clears throat> part of the suggesting on on agendas is we think in terms of what are we going to emphasize for the next 30, next 90 days, and what are, what are the things that we're going to focus on. So those are the things I'd like to put on the table for you to, to think about, and uh, with that, uh, I have nothing more. And I, I have one, one request before we uh, adjourn. <clears throat> now that we've changed a couple of, you know, schedules here and, and uh, assignments, so I'll be going to the workforce, uh, could we have a printout of when these meetings of all of these departments are held? Like, you know, um, oh, yeah, you know, it's like yeah, the meeting schedule board. at least uh, once because sure. Tat's going to have to be aware of, you know, no Monday's schedule for the commission and then on the Thursdays. And sometimes you get pulled in before yeah. those meetings okay. if there's executive hearings and that sort of thing. Also, um, the workforce, the Children's Cove is going to come up in March, I think, is their next meeting. Okay, January so, 25th is the next uh, workforce work, workforce board. And that's at 9? That's at 8. 8 o'clock in the morning, o January yeah. 25th? January 25th, and they meet at uh, Down over, JTEC. Over at uh, North, North Street? In North Street, the end yeah. of North Street. Across from Keating's new office. Yeah. I think I was, I, I attended well, it with you yeah, when right. I first was elected. Didn't you yeah. bring me to one yes, of those I meetings did. just to introduce yes, me? Yeah. And you can go over to the congressman's office. Yes, I will. One financial place. I can go over to see Lance. There you go. If he's there. <laughs> okay, but anyway, that's the. That, it's eight o'clock, and they they start promptly, and uh, they, with the exception of, they're probably be glad to, not to see me anymore because I usually make them extend the meeting by asking questions. So they'll probably be happy to see you. you know, the beginning. Oh, I learned from play. that from you the very from beginning. <laughs> there you go. So, uh, did anybody else have anything else? Do they, do they have any like um? I'm sure some of them don't, but do they have like an um, orientation package? No, but they have the greatest uh, goodies in the morning. They have the <laughs> they have bear claws to die for. Uh, That's like yes. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, they do. They'll give you 18 pounds of material. Yeah. My advice oh. to you is what David Augustino gave to me: let it wash over. <laughs> But there, yeah, they, he has a quite a package uh, to go through. Maybe so. I'll get that ahead of time. I'll and, uh, call David and stop by. Exactly, and uh, Christine Dower is the uh, is the president of JTEC, who is our fiscal agent. Yes, you know, that, I think uh, I do know Christine. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I'm sure I'm certainly going to look forward to seeing you. You'll fill up all those empty CCC spots with all nice? this other stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. I thought I was going to let my house clean up. Oh, by the way, they only meet every other month. Oh. Oh. Okay, and uh, the only committee that I served on was the plus 55, so you don't have to be on anything. Well, we'll see. Yes. I might want to be on something. I think you learn by being on something, so. So, thank you. I else? certainly did, and yours isn't a good, good Well, I'll be able to ask you how their investment fund is doing. Uh, I haven't gotten a report on that in quite a while. Oh. 
Maybe uh, I can get that for you. I'll be one of those good commissioners that uh, follow through. Well, I'll have to get some background done. Uh, good luck with that. You can find out how clever David Augustine really yeah, is. Yeah, I, I, can, I can tell uh, how David, David, it's not a I think he's guy. pretty clever. Do you know who the head of it is? Is Michael Taylor? Oh, is he? Yeah. Oh, he's Dave. So you, you no, remember talking about Jay Tech. Oh, that's right. Jay You remember Michael Taylor. <laughs> Oh, that must have been before, that was before, he was well, in the okay, neighborhood. Well, so all of this chit-chat is going oh, yes. oh, yeah. yeah. I, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. I, I will, you move to adjourn, I second that. Okay, vote by rising. Because now I, I gotta talk to you.